Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? So we are going to discuss the Helldrider, aka the greatest of the greats when it comes to gear. But also, we're also going to talk about the Snoopies, the second greatest of the great when it comes to gear. Now, why is it exactly that I'm saying these guys are the greatest of the greats? Well, because they are one of the only two sets in the game that provide army-based benefits. So let's actually look at it. So when you're talking a level one, of course, everybody to anybody out there has probably always looked at it and wondered, well, what's exactly the best team? Well, there are two ways you can go about this. And I'll go ahead and, again, kind of explain this to you if you haven't seen my Hero Review videos, which I really recommend you check out. But if you are kind of wanting a bet, you know, an idea, what is the best practical hero to use for this particular monster? All right, the easiest answer is that you need to essentially figure out this little info button. And then this will answer every question you ever have. What this says is simply, they are strong against physical and magic. So you're probably thinking, well, what does that even mean? Does that mean I even have an option? Well, you do. So essentially, right, you'll notice that like the heroes that I have picked, all right, are basically the, you know, the drop your defense heroes, increase magic attack heroes, increase your attack heroes. I mean, these are all high DPS all decreased defense based heroes in some way so like trickster is one of the higher free to play i mean if we're talking a pay to play or a free to play it, it really doesn't matter but what really <laughs> you know when it comes to actually picking these right um, a lot of the time a lot of the well, a lot of people i see that are really going head over heels is kind of like a team that is similar to well, kind of like this team, you can also do it like this. I'm sure this would work just fine. And again, you know, this elementalist there probably wouldn't do us any good. So you probably don't want an elementalist in there. And the only reason why is because really what we're trying to aim for here is an auto kill, right? You'll notice that even though that's the case, it's still an auto kill. But, you know, obviously it's going to be different. You know, if you're wanting it to be a little bit more effective anyway, you want to basically stack physical with physical or magic with magic or do a havesy havesy kind of thing with it. Uh, and what I mean by that is so if if you're like going to go full physical like I did on this particular team, then you're going to want to put in preferably Demon Slayer rather than a Elementalist. Like this will work substantially better or you could also go down this path which is to go mostly magic, uh, and this wouldn't be any worse. Uh, let me let me actually see if there's any other heroes. You, if you've got a Snow Queen in there, that should help out quite a bit. Um, I think Bomb and Goblin works a little bit better than Sage. Although to be fair, Sage has a couple of abilities that are nice, but Bomb and Goblin's just got the actual amount of damage. And you'll see here in a second that it does about the same thing. Even though it's two completely different approaches, the it will do about the same thing. Um, so, as we'll see here in about two seconds. Okay, you can see the result's not really going to differ. It's going to be about the same either way you go. But that's essentially the two different teams that you can use. And they're physical or magic. It doesn't really matter. It's just, you know, whatever you're going to choose. Now, for Snow Beast... All right, now Snow Beast is a little bit more tricky, okay? It's magic defense. Now, this is good to know because if it's just purely magic, that means we just don't want to use magic heroes. So, you know, the cure for curing a Snow Beast is you just need to use physical-based heroes. So now you're looking at a team like this. Or if you don't have uh, that particular hero, you can also just as easily use Demon Slayer. You could just as easily use Shade. Um... Heck, even, even uh, somebody like, uh, oh, I mean, I want to say, like, this guy even wouldn't be a bad idea, really, because you're getting defense drops with him. So, in fact, even that wouldn't be a bad option. But, essentially, you know, a team like this will work just fine as well. And, again, these are all gold, so I know some of you out there are probably a little skeptical. But, look, the point is, is that is essentially what works. So regardless, when it comes to increasing the damage rate per hit, that's really where it's at. And like that team, that's pretty solid. Like it's going to kill it every single time. But of course, now if you're going to higher tier monsters and stuff like that, just know that the, the mythology for all monsters in general, all right, whether they go from level one, two, three, and four, right? 
All right, you hit level ones for your resources. You hit level twos if you're wanting gold in particular, but again, a little bit more in resources and speeds. Level threes are like the hot spot for fairly okay speeds. And that's where you'll start to get into the, you know, you're not, now you're talking more, more of your rares and stuff of that nature. Like you might get a few here and there, you might get some relocators and stuff of that nature. And that's where it's really at level threes, but level fours, you know, according to the, and I, I will have in, you know, in substance, uh, another video that discusses this particular drop rate that I'm, I'm actually talking with you, but it's, look, it's just, a, it's really simple. All right. But let's actually look at the gear, right, for these two particular types of monsters. Now, of course, you know, when we are getting into this stuff, all right, I just want you to understand that this is not going to be the all-end-all, best of the best you could awesomely pick in all the game, okay? When it comes to this particular gear, all right, it's, it's, it's good and it's bad in its own way, uh, depending on how you use it, right? So to begin with, all right, if we're talking the Helldrider set, it is the only set really that, in my opinion, it's it's mostly dedicated army attack. Um, and you can kind of see that. <laughs> Look, it's everywhere in this set. You've got 12% there, 20% there, you know, 9% here and there. And I mean, all you can you can kind of get an idea, right? Because if you had three burning scrolls, you're looking at, you know, almost 27% right there that you can add. You know, there's 15% range attack in the Skull Crusher and another 20% in army attack. So obviously the only main difficulty with all of these particular monsters, right, is that the rares are not easy, okay? <laughs> to get these particular items to gold, to get these kind of stats, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money usually to even get anywhere near this. I think the average player can get up to green and then probably stop. <laughs> because once you start getting into blue, it starts to get... A little bit more difficult. Purple, it's really difficult. But gold, you're just, I don't know, it's its something different. Now, I happen to have a purple skull crusher on my own equipment set because, in my opinion, between a purple uh, frostwing sword and a purple skull crusher, I just prefer a skull crusher all day long because it helps immensely in range attack and infantry defense. So it's perfect for a range inf player. Because it really does kind of, uh, it complements it very well. And especially since you get that army attack boost. So it adds to not just your cav range in it. You know, so it kind of evens it out a little bit. Now, uh, the Lays of the Deceiver, you know, if you're, if you're just starting out, again, it's not a bad piece of range, you know, leggings that you can get when you're starting out. Because 12% is pretty good at gold. But when you're looking at, like, blue, I mean, it's still, it's it's okay. You know, there are certainly better pieces that can be worn in the leg set at green or blue. I mean, to be quite honest with you, at that particular set, uh, just if, if you just had the leggings, I wouldn't recommend it. But when it comes to the accessories, of course, you guys have probably seen burning squirrels come up here in the past on this particular channel. Back when I used to trap, I used to use burning squirrels. Now, in my opinion, all right, burning squirrels are kind of like the, the, they are like the crux to every beginner account, I think. You can really benefit from a Burning Scroll because you're adding army attack and HP at the same time simultaneously, and you get some chamber production, which is really good, and that's one of the things that I really love about that set in particular. Um, the Dark Ages has his own benefits because he adds infantry attack and army. I, I mean, that's, again, you're up to you, but me personally, I ended up getting that when I was starting out. Didn't really particularly hate it. Uh, the same thing for the armor of the abyss. If you're like really beginner free to play, that's like maybe the first piece that you ought to grab. Because to be quite honest with you, even at like green to gray, it's not terribly like. I wouldn't say it's terrible really. I think you get quite a bit out of it for just a tiny piece of gear. But now that's the Helldrader set. Now of course the Snow Beast set, like I said, is it complements it much in the same way because this set is your army HP and defense. So winter mints are like by far one of the godly, ungodly. It's like uncontested when it comes to gear. It's like one of the most favorited pieces of gear you can have. And obviously it increases your range attack again, which, you know, if you put a skull crusher and a winter mints together, you're talking about somebody with a real nice pair of gloves. <laughs> Um, of course, a winter parka is not too bad. It, it comes in handy from certain cir circumstances. I even love it 
on a green to blue tier level, it's really not that bad. The same thing with the Winter Stompers. Again, it just it really isn't that terribly bad. But where where it comes into eh, kind of into iffy zone with the Stompers is it's just defense, which uh, to be fair, I don't focus on. So for me, Stompers I kind of ignored. I'd rather have a Parker over the Mets when it comes to this particular gear set. That's just my opinion. But Needless to say, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to look at these other videos. And needless to say, I'll see you guys next time.